glad to be here. Thought I would share with you one of those hard challenges. Am I set? I would share with you one of my hard challenges <laughs> to illustrate what I think about emotional intelligence. I didn't know I could be that scared. Um, it was a gorgeous day, and I was in the kitchen looking outside the window, and I saw this my beautiful sugar maple with the strong, sturdy trunk and the gorgeous crimson leaves, and realized I hadn't heard the sound of my middle son bouncing that basketball, and it, it had been quite a while. And I was trying to calm myself down, craned my neck a little bit to see if I could see him, and I still couldn't. And as I was beginning to rush out the door, I'm telling myself, be calm. Positive possibilities exist, even though I can't think of them, and I need to be calm if something is wrong. As I get outside and I'm still looking around and I still don't see him, I felt myself ready to bolt and scream and run for help. And instead, I yelled for him and I went scurrying around looking. And then I look up and at least 20 feet off the ground, if not way higher, I saw him maneuvering his legs to straddle the second from highest branch on that tree with one more to go. And I stopped. <sighs> I was afraid, but it was a fear that went deeper than that moment. It tapped into my real deep biggest fear, which is that I had totally failed him as a parent. I could not get him to listen to my limits. This is a child who experienced the world by testing the outer edges of his limits and his achievements. And he sensed my fear and he scoffed at it. He felt that it was reason to distrust my judgment and therefore to discount my authority. Man, is that proof that I was horrible. I failed. So on that day, he was testing not just his abilities and where the edge of that was, he was testing me. He so wanted the reassurance that I got him, that I could see through his lens and he wanted to be able to trust in me to trust in him. Metaphorically, he wanted me to be the trunk of his tree from which he could branch out to the furthest reaches of his abilities. And when he saw me scurrying around in that fear, he knew that he could not rely on me as much as he could rely on that tree. So he climbed higher and realizing that my fears had sent him and endangered him, I felt awful. But what if on that day when I was coming out the door, instead I had simply said, hey sweetie, where'd you go? He would have looked at me and he would have been thrilled with his achievement and he would have said, here I am mom, look at me. He wanted reassurances and he was missing it that day that I could trust him to set up his own achievable challenges. That he would know what failure was worth taking. Now did I believe it that day? Seeing him one branch from the higher one on a branch that had I not gone out and had he not seen my fear, I knew that fear contributed to him continuing because I had been screaming and he was still climbing. He hadn't answered or said anything to me. He needed that reassurance. There's a doctor named Dr. Carol Dweck and her research demonstrates that parents' growth mindset has a profoundly positive effect on the young children's growing up to be young adults. A growth mindset views failure 
as just opportunities to learn the life skills and the, the knowledge needed to grow well. And its presence in a parent is the strongest factor differentiating between those young adults who view themselves as thriving and resourceful from those who don't. Now, I don't know about you, but having a mindset as a philosophy is one thing. Putting it into practice every day, entirely different story as a parent. And what is needed is an amazing amount of practice. And we get practice every day with all of those things that happen, all of the feelings that come up for us as we're sitting in this room when we're with our children, we're dealing with our feelings all the time. And practice, frequent repetition, analyzing what it is that's working, getting the support we need for ourselves, from outside, from inside, that internal dialogue as well as the external dialogue. The good news is all of that is something we have control over. And not only is there behavioral research that supports that this practicing of, of frequently trying is really what helps us learn the life skills we need, but now we have the advances in the brain research that helps us understand how. With every time we're trying to learn a new skill, with each separate, separate experience of trying, our brain cells are signaling the brain pathways to become more effective and more efficient. Faster, stronger, more easily accessed by changing the tree-like aspects of those brain cells, the trunk, the roots, and the branches. Every time we try, we're making that learned skill stronger, faster, more easily accessible to us. Now, why is that relevant? Because it is so reassuring that every single time we are triggered with a feeling that we are uncomfortable with, that we want to bury our heads in the sand, who, where, I don't see the man who was talking about that last night. Every time we have one of those feelings, it's actually an opportunity. An opportunity to enhance our lives, to enhance our ability to use our feelings to work for us rather than against us. That day on that tree incident, I had not been practiced enough as I was running out that door and looking for him. However, seeing him so high off the ground, knowing that also that I had sent him further up the tree with him seeing my fear, I was so scared that I knew failure, further failure, was not an option. And that determination created the growth mindset that I needed to safeguard my son. I reassured myself, somehow I am going to figure out how to lead my child to safety. I didn't know how, but I knew I had to. I succeeded that day not because I knew those reassurances that I was giving myself were true, but I knew that those reassurances had to succeed for my son to succeed. So I let myself follow those self-reassurances so that I could access the full power of my brain to figure out, find those internal resources to know somehow I am going to do what is going to get him to choose to climb down instead of up. There was one more branch and that was not nearly as strong. Success happened by me tapping into my love and channeling all of it into communicating confidence that came out in my voice, in my demeanor, in everything about me. And I looked at him and I said, 
look at you. Reassurance plays a role in our growing our emotional intelligence. And we have the power to get the, the, to get the support we need to make it happen. And what I would like to leave with you is that we can ask ourselves, how can I use reassurance in this moment? What does this child need a reassurance about? Because what got me to that success was me asking, what does he need right now as a reassurance? And I knew that he needed to be reassured that that sense of accomplishment was so strong that he had nothing left to prove to me or to him. And that's it.